please admit the governor. Governor. Thank you. Governor Sanders, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good afternoon. We got one on the front row. <laughs> Speaker Shepard, President Hester, constitutional officers, members of the Supreme Court, distinguished members of the General Assembly, my family, and my fellow Arkansans. It is an honor to join you for my first State of the State address. It's been just over a year since I took office as our state's 47th governor, and what an incredible year it has been. Compared to last year's inaugural address, today is a bit more low-key. But what today lacks in fanfare, we make up for it in substance. Last year, I made promises. This year, I'm reporting results. But I didn't do any of it alone. It was the partnership and the work of this body that helped us bring about transformational change. And it wasn't always easy, but it is something that we can certainly all be proud of. Even on the hard days, the one thing that we could count on were the people of Arkansas. One of the most difficult days since I took office was March 31st of last year, the day that tornadoes tore through central Arkansas and when. I was in Wynn two days after, meeting with students, with families, and seeing the damage to the town's homes, businesses, and Wynn High School. One of the stories I heard about that day was about a group of high schoolers who came after the storm passed. They showed up to see their school and the damage. And unlike just about everything else, the flagpole was still standing. But the flags that normally hung there were gone. They searched their town, they tracked down their flags, and they mounted it back on that flagpole. It is the flagpole that is standing in front of that school today, bent but not broken. In government, it's easy to forget the bigger picture. Let us never lose sight of the people that we serve and let us never forget why they elected us to be here in the first place. I came into this office as Arkansas's first woman governor and the youngest governor in the country. But those are not the data points that mattered to me. The ones that I cared about were 48th in America for starting teacher pay, 45th in the nation for literacy, the highest tax burden in the region, the highest violent crime rate in the nation. Arkansas had deep, entrenched problems when I took office, and we were not going to solve those problems with the same failed policies that got us here in the first place. So we charted a new course, and that meant change. Sometimes, a lot of it. And it made a few people uncomfortable. But we are building a better, a safer, and a stronger Arkansas. In fact, our work is making Arkansas a model for the nation. Our priorities are reflected in the budget that we put before us. Hard as it may be, I made a promise to the people of Arkansas that we would work to slow the growth of government. And with the help of my cabinet, we have kept it. This year's budget increases spending by only 1.76%, far below the 3% year-over-year average that we have had in recent years. If you send me a budget that funds critical services for Arkansans, 
while slowing the growth of government. I will sign it. That's because as revenues climb and costs slow, we'll have room to cut taxes. We have already done so by more than $300 million. And I'm committed to responsibly phasing out our state income tax and letting every Arkansan keep more of their hard-earned money. Tax cuts are just some of the bipartisan legislation that we have come together to pass. We enacted the PROTECT Act, death by delivery, universal licensing reform, social media protections for kids, and much, much more, all with support from both sides of the aisle. Frankly, there are people outside of this chamber, and maybe even a few inside, who want to distract us from these common sense reforms. I beg of you, do not let them. There is a lot of wisdom in the marble halls of the Capitol, but I've learned even more from spending time with people from Magnolia to Mulberry and Benton to Bentlaville, which is why I've traveled more than 16,000 miles in Arkansas last year and hosted more than 250 events. I remember holding a town hall in Heber Springs. I was taking questions, and I was surprised when half of the crowd sounded like they had come from the Soprano Central Casting. I thought, do people from the Northeast just have a way of talking over everyone? Or do we have our own little Italy on the shores of Greer's Ferry? Turns out, the answer is yes and yes. As I mingled with the crowd afterward, I figured out the reason. These newcomers love our freedom-loving state and our great people. And they're not just in Heber. I've met transplants from everywhere I have gone. We are even getting a former Kentucky Wildcat in Fayetteville as I speak. Welcome to Arkansas, Coach. We've added 21,000 new Arkansans last year alone. These newcomers are joined by companies from literally all over the country and all over the world. I traveled to Europe and Asia to pitch businesses on Arkansas, and I'm here to report they liked what they heard. Companies proposed more than $1 billion in new investments last year. Companies like Raphael, Raytheon, and Lockheed Martin are turning Camden, Arkansas into the arsenal of freedom, supplying Israel's Iron Dome, America's Marine Corps and service members across the globe. Dassault Falcon is adding 800 new jobs right here in Little Rock, and Mississippi County is now the top still producing county in America. Yeah. A little bias there. You can tell where the Northeast Arkansas crew is sitting. Walther Arms is helping us defend our rights with the expansion in Fort Smith. And companies are making investments left and right in South Arkansas lithium. Our national economy is dragging. Blue states are shrinking, but Arkansas is roaring ahead. And that starts with education, which was my top priority since taking office. I worked with this body, this group, to pass Arkansas Learns and launch the largest transformation of Arkansas education in modern history and the largest single investment in our public schools ever before. Before this year, our teachers were some of the worst paid in the country. 
in many districts, there wasn't a single educator making more than $50,000 a year. Learns raised starting teacher pay from $36,000 to $50,000 and gave every single teacher in the state a $2,000 raise. Arkansas went from 48th in the country to the top five overnight. Before this year, only a third of Arkansas third graders could read at grade level. Learns deployed 120 literacy coaches to public schools across the state, targeting at-risk students with the attention that our kids need and the attention that they deserve. Before this year, Arkansas families had no choice where to send their kids to school. Learns expanded education freedom to more than 5,000 students in just one year. 50% of those students have learning disabilities. We have a few EFA families that are here with us today, including Colonel Chad Bridges from the Arkansas National Guard's 39th Infantry Brigade combat team, his wife Carrie, and their two kids. I met Chad and some other Arkansas Guardsmen during my trade mission to Germany last year. And while we th were there, Chad brought up the Learns Act and mentioned that his family was taking advantage of the program so that they could send their son Karsten, who has Down syndrome, to Compassion Academy in Conway. Now, nearly nine months into the school year, Karsten could not be doing better. He's never been the type of kid who lets his differences get in the way of doing what he knows that he is capable of doing. And at Compass Academy, he is surrounded by a supportive staff who believes in him just as much as he do, does. We ask a lot of moms and dads who protect our communities and our freedoms and who keep us safe. And it's important that we recognize their service and their sacrifice and that we stand up and show them our support. Karsten is here with us today. Karsten, are you up there? I'd love to get a wave. Let that be a reminder to this group. Karsten is the person that we are serving. Karsten is the person that we are helping. And Karsten is the face that we are fighting for every single day. Year one of the Learns Act targeted the most at-risk students in our state. But education freedom should be for everyone. And soon, education freedom accounts will be too. I had the opportunity to visit Harvest Time Academy in Fort Smith last week to announce that EFA applications for next year are now open to more families. The children of first responders, law enforcement, veterans, and any student attending a D-rated school. In just the first day of the application period, we had more than 1,800 new signups, new students looking for an opportunity. And those numbers have only climbed since. And I'm happy to report that 25% of those applicants are the children of active duty military personnel and our state's veterans. They deserve to know that we are cheering and rooting for them. Educational freedom is the least that we can do for those who put everything on the line for our freedom. 
This time next year, we will have universal education freedom for the first time in Arkansas history. <laughs> Send me a budget that continues to fully fund the LEARNS Act, and I will sign it. Education was my first priority, but it was far from my only one. For too many Arkansans, the thought of taking your kids to the park or stopping at a gas station at night is a scary one. The reason is simple. Some of our leaders think it is compassionate to coddle criminals. Frankly, they need a reality check. I've been to the southern border and I've seen how Joe Biden's compassion lets the cartels traffic millions of people in deadly drugs into our country. Just last week, Arkansas State Police seized half a pound of fentanyl in a routine traffic stop. That is enough to kill 100,000 people, a town that is bigger than all of the population of Fort Smith, Arkansas. And we've read far too many reports here in Arkansas about what violent repeat offenders who are sentenced to decades in prison let out early and then go on to commit other crimes. This isn't compassion, it's cruelty. And we've had enough. Yes, sir. Last week, I thanked 40 Arkansas Guardsmen before they headed out on a mission to our southern border. They know the gravity of the security and the humanitarian crisis that we are facing. And every single one of them volunteered to go on that mission, many for their second time. Last year, the legislature passed and I signed Death by Delivery which charges fentanyl dealers with murder if the drugs they traffic cause a fatal overdose. And we came together again to pass the PROTECT Act. No more catch and release of violent repeat offenders. In Arkansas, we will keep the most dangerous criminals off of our streets. And we're paving the way to build a new 3,000 bed prison. And in the meantime, we have opened up 1,000 beds in our existing capacity to take pressure off of our local jails. <laughs> Arkansas State Police are on the front lines of that effort. It's why I allocated $3.8 million in my budget to replenish their ranks. When we think of our state troopers, we often think of them chasing down criminals or launching drug busts. And that's certainly part of the job, but it's not all Magnum PI. Late one night this January, Trooper Brandon Bird was on patrol on Interstate 40. He came across an older man sitting in his vehicle and out of gas. Bird sat with the man as he called a family member who couldn't come to pick the gentleman up until the next morning. So Trooper Bird drove the man to the nearest hotel. And when they got there, he found out that the elderly gentleman had no money. So he paid $100 out of his own pocket for the man to have a warm room for the night. Brandon felt like he was just doing his job. But the reality of the situation soon sunk in. It was dark and it was cold. And the man had no gas. If Bird had not been there, the man likely would have frozen to death. Trooper Bird is with us today, and I want to thank him and all of our law enforcement for their service to our state. Brandon, could you stand up and be recognized?
Brandon's story is remarkable, but it's not uncommon for the exceptional men and women of the Arkansas State Police. When the left calls to defund the police, remember that these are the troopers that they want to get rid of. Remember that we do not need less of Trooper Bird. We need a lot more like him. That's why we've increased state police ranks by more than 17% in just one year since I've taken office. And it's why I'm working to grow the force by more than 100 additional officers. Send me a budget that funds our police and I will sign it. public safety and education, when we crack those problems, a low cost of living won't be the only thing bringing newcomers to Arkansas. And they're hardly this group's only accomplishments. I was the first governor in the country with the help of those in this room to kick a Chinese state-owned company off of our farmland and out of our state. Together, we launched a comprehensive workforce strategy to get Arkansans back in the job market. Arkansas Learns plays a big role in that, growing career and technical education, and ending the lie that if you don't go to college, you are somehow less than. We're making progress on our maternal health crisis. Each year, 1,100 women in our state never even see a doctor until they go into labor. I signed an executive order to help women access the health care they need because we know that healthier women mean healthier babies. Study after study shows that too much social media exposure leaves our kids anxious and depressed. Unfortunately, suicide rates for young teens have tripled since 2007. Depression among teenagers is up 150%. And 30% of all teenage girls are now seriously considering suicide. We were one of the first states to pass legislation protecting our kids from dangerous and addictive social media, but we cannot stop there. It is time to start a conversation and make this issue one of our next big priorities. Experts suggest goals like no smartphones before high school, no social media before 16, phone-free schools, and more outdoor play and childhood independence. Big tech, just like Joe Camel, says that it is kids' right to use their addictive products. I disagree. And Arkansas will lead on this just like we have done on education and public safety because we have to. And I fully expect that big tech will take us to court, but we will fight them because our children's future depends on it. We banned indoctrination in our schools. We got rid of nonsense words like birthing person and men in women's sports. We focused on improving the quality of life. My husband, Brian, who is here with me, and my three kids are spearheading the Natural State Initiative to grow outdoor recreation and tourism. Already, we're smashing tourism records left and right. Our tourism revenue in each month of 2023 has already set a new record, and 2024 is on track to break records again. We live in one of the most beautiful states in America, and it's time that the rest of the world finds out about it too.
amid all this progress, we have had challenges too. We're just over a year past the March 31st tornadoes that I mentioned earlier. And with us today is Pastor Eddie Miller from Jacksonville. I met Pastor Miller the day after his church was destroyed in the storm. And when I visited, most of his entire structure and church was completely gone. But his faith stood strong. Pastor Miller led us deep into the sanctuary where the roof had completely caved in. Miraculously, there was one wall still standing. And on that wall hung not one, not two, but three wooden crosses. Pastor Miller, my husband Brian, a few local legislators, we put our arms around each other in that moment and we prayed. We prayed for strength. We prayed for resilience. We prayed that this community, though bent, would not break. A year later, by the grace of God and with the sweat of his congregation, Pastor Miller's church walls are back up. Pastor Miller, if you could be recognized. The rebuilding isn't done yet, but when it's finished, it will be better than what stood there before, a testament to our grit and to God's eternal love. The greatest privilege of this job is being with the people of Arkansas, who no matter what, will never be broken. We are humble. We are gracious, we work hard, and we take care of one another. We put our trust in our families and our faith in God Almighty. May we never, ever forget who we are and who we serve. And let us never be afraid to charge boldly ahead. May God bless you, and may God bless the great state of Arkansas. Thank you so much. Let's get to work.